Assalamualaikum everybody. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, class three of antiarrhythmic drugs. When we talk about class three of antiarrhythmic drugs, it should be there should be a question in your mind that why I have not discussed class two today, right? Because previously I discussed class one, and now I am discussing class three. So why exactly am I skipping class two? Because class one and class three is more towards uh, you know focusing on the ventricles. Okay. Okay. So class three is about potassium channel blocking. Okay. And when uh, and one thing you should know about class three is this that it does not only act on potassium channels. Okay. It also acts. It also blocks sodium channels, calcium channels, even the hormones. Okay, um, that uh, that should so that the heart rate should be slowed down. Okay, so you see, this class of uh, drug is used to treat tachyarrhythmias, right? Okay. Again, cardiac potential. I want you all to memorize cardiac potential. All right. Uh, action potential. So you see phase zero, phase one, phase two, phase three. Phase zero, which is depolarization, we have influx of calcium and sodium. In phase one, we have this calcium channel being closed up, or sodium channel being closed up. In phase two, calcium channel keeps on increasing, however, sodium, potassium channel keeps on getting out, right? All right. And then we have rapid repolarization, okay? And then the resting potential is there again maintained. I assume at this stage you all have memorized what is P wave, QRST. Uh, so I am not talking more about it. And I do assume that you know that there is QT intervals. And when I say QT intervals, it means that I will be discussing about the ventricles right ventricles being pumped right okay now uh, that day we looked at the diagram and we said class one is sodium channel blockers and when i say sodium channel blockers it was acting here now if you see here class three which is potassium blockers so you see the wave was here and it's pulled towards here you see it's a difference here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, okay. So you see here. When uh, here the normal action potential was there, right? This was phase three, and here it was pulled here, right? So if I ask you in the exam, that tell me where exactly phase three medicines would act. So you would tell me. That they would act on uh, class three medicines would act on the phase three. Okay, uh, all right. So again, the mnemonic which I try to give you so that your life will become easy to memorize the drugs. So the mnemonic for a class three is is bad. Uh, that is ibutilide, citalolol. Then we have britilim. Then we have Amiodaron, and then we have dofatidine, dofatilide. Okay, then we have mechanism. So when we talk about mechanism, so its major mechanism is it prolongs the action potential duration and effective refractory period. Wow. Okay. So these drugs act by interfering with uh, outward potassium currents and slow inverts towards the sodium current. So you see here, they're, they're even saying that they these would prolong the action potential duration. Now, what do I mean by that action potential duration? You see, uh, here till here, okay? Here till here, this is the line where you would say this is the duration of action potential, okay? So if you're taking a class three medicine, so this would prolong till here, okay? When we talk about effective refractory period, so effective refractory period is 
actually from here till here okay it's a bit higher all right and then uh, what is the refractory period by the way refractory period is that period when uh, you know the neuron is already not neuron sorry here the myocyte is already activated and now uh, it cannot be activated again all right because it's in this period where it is unresponsive if you remember when we talked about neurons in my last semester uh, so we talked about uh, the refractory period and unresponsiveness and everything i hope you have you do remember that still all right so these drugs act by interfering okay we have already done that so the first uh, the first two medicines which we want to discuss are amiodaron and dronidaron so amiodaron is a, uh, structurally related to thyroxin it increases refractoriness uh, when we say refractoriness it means that it is related to the refractory period all right so it increases the refractory period it means that it increases the time of unresponsiveness of the cell okay it also depresses sinus node automaticity and slows conduction the half life of amiodarone is 14 to 100 days which increases the risk of toxicity earlier um i think rabia rabia was there and i think tuba these girls sent me a a drug name all right and then they asked me that why exactly the toxicity is not apparent all right of a drug and i think that that drug half life was also 5 days so <clears throat> when we looked into it so we found that you see some of the drug gets bind up all right to the tissues and then it release slowly but but again with that drug also and with this drug also the drugs which have a longer half life though yes we don't need to take the medicines that frequently that hassle is re re relax a bit but you see because of the long half life the risk of toxicity is more so again we do have a very huge disadvantage of it okay but the this kind of a drug toxicity will appear if somebody will keep on taking it for let's say two months three months stuff like that okay so the plasma concentration of amiodarone is not well correlated with its effect although electrophysiological effects may be seen within hours after parenteral administration effects on abnormal rhythmias may not be seen for several days the anti arrhythmic drug uh, the anti arrhythmic effect may last for weeks or months after the drug is discontinued i'm sure you you all do uh, reason that that why it is there because of the reason is half life is more so you see it will take time to flush off from the body all right so amiodarone um, is used for the treatment of refractory life threatening ventricular arrhythmia in preference to lidocaine additional uses include the treatment of atrial or ventricular arrhythmias including conversion of atrial fibrillation and the suppression of arrhythmias in patients with implanted defibrillators it also possesses antianginal and vasodilatory effects amiodarone is a first line agent for patients unresponsive to cpr and epinephrine this is a very important point and this is usually asked about amiodarone so let's say you got a patient who is unresponsive to epinephrine or any other drug uh, or even the cpr okay so you will tell them that uh, we should you know in order to treat the tachycardia we should give this person amiodarone hmm okay so then we have dronidarone so it is chemically related to amiodarone but lacks iodine atom all right it is approved for the treatment of permanent atrial fibrillation and flutter that cannot be converted to normal sinus rhythm amiodarone produces dose related and cumulative adverse effects what do we mean by dose related and cumulative you see when we talk about dose related it means that of course this 
this is relating to how much of the medicine we are taking in. But when we have, when we are talking about cumulative adverse effects, it means that when we keep on taking, obviously it will get accumulated in our body and then adverse effects can be produced because this drug has an increased half-life. It, ha it has a long half-life. All right. So serious non-cardiac adverse effects include pulmonary fibro uh, fibrosis and interstitial pneumonitis. Uh, so what do we mean by that? So you see, this drug is affecting lungs as well. You see, this drug is uh, here it's producing effects which are not even related to heart, all right? So uh, it will affect lungs and it will cause pneumonia. So other, other uh, effects include photosensitivity, gray man syndrome, okay? Uh, and then corneal micro deposits. So let's talk about these three adverse effects. First of all, let's talk about gray man syndrome. What is that? You see this man, he has the bluish gray screen, all right? And this has happened when the older person especially will keep on taking the drug for a longer period of time, let's say for uh, two months, all right? So afterwards, what will happen? The drug will start to accumulate under the skin, all right? And because of which, the person will actually develop this uh, gray man syndrome, all right? Okay, next thing is corneal micro deposits. So you see, when you'll keep on taking this medicine, so uh, because of the secretions which are there in the eye, so this drug actually goes in there, okay, and gets accumulated here. And if you see here, it's just right here on the cornea, all right? So because of this reason, it will create blindness also. But again, it's temporarily, it can be reversed if it is a stop timely, all right? Okay. So because of this only, we, we can develop photosensitivity as well. And thyroid disorders, all right. If you remember, we discussed here that this drug has iodine, okay? Basically, amiodarone has iodine and dodoron lacks it, all right? So the thing is this, that it can actually affect the thyroid glands, all right? Uh, so the thing is, hyperthyroidism can be developed, all right? Because of the reason, it has iodine in it, a lot of iodine, hyperthyroidism. And hypothyroidism can also be developed because it can actually suppress conversion of T3 to T4. That means if I am giving somebody these medicines, so I have to really analyze their lungs. Uh, I have to analyze their eyes. I have to analyze their skin. I have to analyze their thyroid, how its, act, its activity is. All right. Then it also develops hepatotoxicity, neurotoxicity, and cardiotoxicity. Oh, wow. So many side effects. But why are we still taking it? Because of the reason it does have this benefit, right? When somebody is unresponsive, so then you can give it. So it's just this, that you vary the use from patient to patient, okay? If somebody is going good with the drug, give it, but monitor, all right? Okay. Then we have ibutilide. So ibutilide is a class three antiarrhythmic uh, indicated for rapid conversion of atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter to normal sinus rhythm. So it must be administered by IV infusion. It blocks slow inward sodium currents and prolongs the action potential duration, thereby causing a slowing of sinus rate and AV conduction velocity. Then we have sotolol. So this prolongs cardiac action potential, increases the duration of refractory period, and has non-selective beta adrenoreceptor antagonist activity. And I think we have discussed it so many times. I do not need to discuss it again, that why, how, and stuff, all right? Okay, then we have uses include treatment of atrial arrhythmias or life-threatening ventricular arrhythmias. 
and treatment of sustained ventricular tachycardia. Its adverse effects include significant proarrhythmic action, dyspnea, and dizziness. In my previous lecture, I talked that proarrhythmic condition is whenever we give anti-inginal uh, anti-arrhythmic drugs, so uh, they yes they they are given to fix the arrhythmias, but sometimes they end up causing arrhythmias. Okay, uh, dyspnea is of course difficulty in breathing, and dizziness. You all know what is that. All right, then we have dofetilide. So this is approved for the conversion and maintenance of normal sinus rhythm in atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter. Dofetilide is a potent inhibitor of rapid component of the delayed rectifying potassium channels and has no effect on conduction velocity. Its adverse effects include serious arrhythmias and condition abnormalities. So this is overall the summary I could produce for you. That is it for today. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining the lecture.